Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday, June 3rd. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. We have a couple of tropical systems to talk about today. This is the large basin-wide view. We, of course, have potential tropical cyclone 1, which is the system moving northeastward toward the Florida Peninsula and will cross during the weekend. We also have a tiny little circulation that NHC is monitoring west of Bermuda, which is this island here, dubbed Invest 92L. We'll just briefly talk about this here. There's a tight little surface circulation showing up to the west southwest of the island, but there's not a lot of thunderstorm activity associated with it. A couple of scattered showers on the northwest side, uh, but other than that, not a lot of organized convective activity. We do have dry air surrounding it on the west and southern sides, and we're expecting this upper level northwesterly flow to start catching up with the system and imparting more vertical shear over it during the next day or two. And for that reason, the environment doesn't seem that conducive for further development, and NHC is only giving us a 10% chance as this scoots to the east, near or just south of Bermuda, where some showers and some gusty winds may occur, but we're not expecting a lot of development with this ultimately over the next few days. Switching over now to potential tropical cyclone 1, or PTC1 for short. Uh, this is not officially a tropical cyclone yet, and that's really owing to its still broad and ill-defined nature. We do have a broadly closed elliptical circulation centered just north of the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, but it is not very tight, and typically the definition of a tropical cyclone uh, involves organized deep convection around a well-defined compact low-level center and uh, this is anything but compact at the moment. If we look at the zoomed in picture we'll see some rotation to the northeast of the Yucatan and there's probably some sort of trough extension up to the northeast here uh, but ultimately there's not a lot of tight wind flow around it and we can see that uh, in the aircraft observations from the plane that's been flying around in there showing a lot of light wind in these blue and grayish green colors. Uh, not a lot of wind here, maybe a maximum flight level value of 30 knots, not even getting that much at the surface. The pressure is still high at about 1,004 millibars, and most of the strongest winds are probably off to the northeast where all these showers are near the Florida Keys. So if we look at that satellite picture again, a lot of this cloudiness and heavy weather, gusty winds and rain well removed from where the aircraft is identifying the surface circulation of PTC-1 right now. So this is again a typical early season system, lots of wind shear pushing all the heavy weather off to the east side, very asymmetric, loose system without a lot of wind related impacts, but there is a lot of water uh, related impacts coming as rain spreads into Florida and has been falling in Cuba for a while now. We look at the water vapor satellite imagery, lots of dry air on the west side, again contributing to that asymmetry, all the weather again on the east side. That dark gray color is right over the surface center of circulation. That's likely to persist as this upper level troughiness continues to push that dark gray area over the system center as it moves toward Florida. And this is unlikely to change uh, during the course of the next couple days. So we expect the system to maintain this general structure that you see here today. This is the Miami radar plot from Mark Nissenbaum's webpage showing all the rain, again spreading over the Florida Keys and the southern Florida Peninsula now, where several inches are possible during the next 24 uh, to 36 hours. We are eventually expecting this to move on toward the east, fortunately not a multi-day event, uh, the, the kind of flooding event where rain just keeps falling for three to four days, not really expecting that kind of event here. Uh, the rain should clear out by about Saturday afternoon or evening at the very latest, and we can see that on the ECMWF model. This is the upper level flow showing that trough here, just to show that the system will move northeast and continue experiencing this westerly flow aloft, which means it will continue to be sheared. And so if we look at the moisture plot here, We'll see that asymmetry we saw in the satellite imagery. Here's all the moisture in the rain moving over Florida now on the eastern side of the center of circulation. And as we move into Saturday, uh, as we get into the afternoon, the system's center will be approaching the coastline, but most of the rain will already be mostly east of Florida by this time and will completely clear out at some point during the afternoon and evening at the latest. So we're not expecting this to last into Sunday, but we could still have gusty winds left behind uh, even as the rain moves on uh, and gets out of the area first. And as this crosses Florida, again, still seeing a lot of shear here, so asymmetric system. We could see some intensification once it starts getting closer to Bermuda as it interacts with a strong jet streak. I'll show you that here. As it moves out, 
Uh, to the southeast of the Carolinas, we do have this strong jet streak uh, creating a lot of upper level divergence over the system and maybe some non-tropical forcing that causes this to intensify a little bit. Could bring some heavy weather Bermuda's way as we get into Sunday and Monday and perhaps Tuesday. Uh, but ultimately, this is not expected to turn up toward the eastern seaboard or anything due to this generally westerly steering flow. Uh, the jet is still fairly far south this early in the year, and uh, this is going to move generally northeastward or east-northeastward as it exits Florida. Here's the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Again, not technically a tropical cyclone at this point. They do forecast it to become one, but whether or not they officially designate this as a tropical storm won't matter a whole lot. The system is going to have the same character either way. We have tropical storm warnings because of the tropical storm-like conditions that it is bringing to western Cuba and soon the Keys in southern Florida and perhaps the northwestern Bahamas as well over the weekend. And a mostly rain-related impacts though. Uh, tropical storm warnings for winds of 40 miles per hour. We could see that in gusts in some of these areas. Certainly possible, but most of the impacts here going to be water related. We have this swath of heavy rain expected to come across southern Florida, several inches likely uh, from Orlando and Tampa Bay southward, and then north of those two cities, not expecting a whole lot of rain uh, dry north of there. And if we look at the flash flooding potential associated with this, elevated especially south of Lake Okeechobee, and then uh, getting lower as you go deeper into the Florida Peninsula, farther north. Uh, but do do look out for the localized impacts of flooding. Flooding is a highly localized kind of impact where it really depends on your local conditions, your neighborhood's drainage, your susceptibility in your particular spot. It's just uh, a very local thing. So just be aware and pay attention to your local National Weather Service for the latest information on water-related impacts to your particular location. Here's the wind stuff. This is the tropical storm force probabilities across Florida. Yellow is 30%, so we're seeing you know 30 or lower percent chance of seeing tropical storm force wind in any given location across southern Florida. So again, this isn't really a big wind event, not even high confidence that you'll see winds as high as 40 miles per hour. The vast majority of that will likely be lower than 40 in most locations except in isolated gusts with a system like this. And associated with that wind and general onshore flow out of the south here, we could see some mild water level rises in parts of the Florida coastline where we do see a forecast here for some mild storm surge, but generally limited to a couple of feet. So not expecting a major event here, but some minor coastal flooding is possible with any kind of tropical system bringing onshore flow uh, to, uh, to the coastline. So that's really all there is to say about this system, a typical early season sloppy area that will bring mostly rain and uh, potential inland flooding impacts to Florida and uh, continuing in western Cuba today, ending by Saturday afternoon in Florida and continuing in the northwestern Bahamas perhaps through Saturday night, and then this will continue northeastward potentially bringing impacts to Bermuda Sunday and Monday and then uh, decaying into a, a extra tropical or non-tropical cyclone as it moves off into the northwestern Atlantic after that. 92L, again, not expected to develop, uh, but could bring some showers to Bermuda in the short term prior to PTC-1's arrival. So kind of a double whammy there, but ultimately not expected to be big events in Bermuda. And then over the rest of the Atlantic, uh, pretty quiet. It's still too early out here to look for future development. You can see a lot of African dust pretty far south and uh, dry air that's still out there this time of year. Water isn't quite that warm yet, and the ITCZ, the span of thunderstorms, is still pretty far south. But that'll eventually migrate north as we get into July and then certainly August, and that's when we really start looking out here. During June, the first official month of the hurricane season, we're really focused on this area of the southwestern Caribbean, southwest Atlantic, and the Gulf of Mexico for potential tropical development. So it's really the threats close to home that we watch most closely early on in the year. So over the next few weeks, We'll be watching this area, and if there are any disturbances that threaten to develop, you will hear about it here. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.